Britain, which is shooting at us, because we believe that's in the middle of Port Stanley, which is out of bounds as far as our gunners are concerned. So we've got a very tense afternoon while we stay here and wait to move off under cover of darkness. The battle made an eerie sight. The British progress marked only by the lines of tracer. Again, the resistance was tougher, the battle longer than expected. At dawn on Monday, the Scots Guards were still trying to fight their way to the top of Mount Tumbledown. the Argentine positions, the artillery was falling like rain, drenching the mountains in debris and smoke. Once the Scots Guards had battled their way to the top of Tumbledown, the Gurkhas prepared to move through onto Sapper Hill, the last ridge almost on the outskirts of Stanley itself. The helicopters, snuggling against the contours of the land, couldn't keep the ammunition coming fast enough. The final bombardment brought the guns down to their last half dozen shells. There was a naval bombardment too, but the task force had suffered such heavy damage that the ships couldn't provide the gunfire support that had been planned. But short of ammunition or not, the British shells kept falling remorselessly until the Argentine line broke. An Argentine cameraman showed what it looked like on the receiving end. The demoralized defenders were pulling back into the town. Officers and men were arguing. Discipline was breaking down. The British tactics were paying off. The appalling bombardment had been going on for weeks. The blockade, even partially enforced, had created a sense of isolation. The weather was turning nasty. There was nowhere else to retreat. The British were worried they might have to fight through the streets. Had the Argentines known that the British were on their last legs logistically, 
with the Navy almost unable to guarantee the supply line any longer. Perhaps they would have fought on. Instead, suddenly it was all over. The guns fell silent. We are still at war with Argentina. And we'll still have cap. Normal anti-air precautions. 8-2, a roger out. Negotiations will start tonight. Although there appears to be a ceasefire at the moment and the Argentinian forces in the Falklands have appeared to have surrendered, this does not necessarily mean that the forces in the mainland Argentine will necessarily stop fighting. Therefore, we will have normal cap, that is, um, air cover, combat air patrols, and we should take the normal precautions against being caught by surprise or whatever. There is a white flag flying over Stanley. <laughs> Very marvellous. Joe Howard Jasley, Marty Jan Circle Saint Foucault Objective Ma, Wa Pugera, Didi Jana. Now their major had to explain to some rather disappointed Gurkhas that their chance for fighting and regimental glory was over. The troops began the dangerous march into Stanley, weaving their way through the minefields which surrounded it. They followed carefully in the tracks of the engineers, the men who'd led every assault, showing the advanced troops the way through the minefields under fire. With the ceasefire still shaky, the order was given, advance, but fire only if fired upon. No more open fire. No more open fire. No more open fire. No more open fire. We beat them! The make safe weapons! Next safe. We're going to use it now. He's not got one at the spot leg, have you? No. <laughs> Two emotions competed, elation that it was all over, and a sense of being drained, almost deprived of purpose. So Helter Skelter had been the final move forward, that his troops were almost at Moody Brook, the Royal Marine Barracks on the outskirts of Port Stanley, before Brigadier Thompson of the Commando Brigade caught up with them. I didn't think it would happen quite as fast as this. I expected this to be happening tomorrow and not today. But I'm delighted that it's happened today. The real enemy defeated, there was time for some regimental rivalry. Two 
Yeah. What sort of opposition was there? Running opposition. Running. They ran away. <laughs> so you just came straight in, right? right? And told to stop. That's right. How'd we you went in? into the town, put up the two parrot flags, the Union Jack, and then the back out by the Marines. Not feeling too good about that. <laughs> what do you expect? Argentine officers were allowed to keep sidearms to emphasize their authority, perhaps even to ensure their safety against their men. That Monday evening, June the 14th, General Moore helicoptered through a snowstorm to negotiate the Argentine surrender. Not just in Port Stanley, he insisted, but everywhere on the islands. <laughs> the surrender was unconditional in everything but name, because when the agreement was drawn up, General Menendez would not have the word unconditional in the final document. In Downing Street, news of the Argentine surrender came as an enormous relief. Prime Minister, could you, uh, could you have a word with us, please? Oh, no. Mrs. Thatcher, just back from telling the Commons, was exuberant. Prime Minister, we have a microphone here. 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 Prime Minister, we have a and, and, and we went about it and did it. Do you think the ceasefire will help? I believe so. I believe so. There's still one or two things. Just listen to everyone. I must go down and talk to them. Where are you? Where As Mrs. Thatcher savoured her moment of triumph with the crowds outside number 10, her opponents in Buenos Aires were getting a very different reception. General Galtieri had intended to address the crowds from the balcony of the presidential palace. But because of the anger and stream of abuse directed at the Argentine leadership, the president took the precaution of addressing the nation from the safety of a television studio, far from the noise and violence of the scenes outside. Right to the end, the Argentine people had been led to believe they were winning. It made the shock of defeat that much less bearable. Forty-eight hours later, President Galtieri was president no more. The search for a successor was on. The uncertainties in Buenos Aires were having their effect on the Falklands. The prisoners, more than 6,000 in Stanley, several thousands more around the islands, had nowhere to live, little food to eat. The British wanted to ship them home, but until someone was willing to accept defeat and guarantee a safe conduct, they had to stay on the islands. The prisoners were taken out to the squalor of the airfield and left amid the mud and debris to fend for themselves. They had only a few days rations when they surrendered, just jerry-built shelter. There weren't even tents for the British.
Suddenly, the danger of men dying needlessly through exposure.